Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you being on today's videos. Ah, Russian military old school fighter aircraft. I can't express to you how much it is so cool to look at aircraft of this generation, old school dogfighting aircraft such as the MiG-15 slash 17 series of fighter jets. They are just cute ditzy little aircraft that are very underrated in the world of aviation I find uh, when it comes to looking at modern fighter jets they seem to supersede the history that is flowing from such an aircraft like this and how much prestige it has earned itself in the history books and aviation history books for sure. Now, the MiG-15 slash 17, and primarily I am going to focus on the MiG-15 model today, is one of those aircraft that you look at and you think, nah, what's the point in this aircraft? It literally looks like a rocket with wings. Well, that's kind of what it is. An engine with a cockpit and designed around just being fast, nimble, and able to do the job quickly with that powerful little engine in there. Developed in the years immediately following World War II, the MiG-15 was the first generation jet fighter designed by McCoy and Gureff Design Bureau of the Soviet Union. The MiG-15 is a single engine, swept wing jet that saw over 15,000 copies produced. The MiG-15 gained fame in the skies over, obviously, Korea, where it battled the also beautiful F-86 Sabre and other allied aircraft. It proved an excellent match to the Sabre and often came down to the skill of the pilot that determined who made it home and who was left dangling from a parachute. Russian designers Mikoy and Gurevich created the MiG-15 in 1946 with its first flight conducted in December of 1947. Russia's desire for an aircraft to combat the devastating bombings by the massive but sluggish B-29s was answered. From the start, the fighter jet surprised all the US military with its speed and incredible climb rate. It was Russia's first quote, all new unquote aircraft, and it challenged the United States air superiority, basically giving them a middle finger and saying, yeah, my tiny little jet can actually cause you some major problems. The MiG-15 was so effective it caused the US to expedite the delivery of the F-86 Sabre in order to reclaim its air dominance. During the Korean War, when Soviet forces unveiled the MiG-15, the tiny swept wing interceptor that would go on to spark many, many dogfights really did raise a few eyebrows. However, the very first turbojet fighter to come out of the Soviet Union was actually the MiG-9. It was developed by Artyom Mikoyan and Mikhail Gurevich. MiG. Get it? It first flew in 1946, however, its engine being reversed engineered, interestingly enough, from a German BMW 003, just couldn't produce more than about 2,500 pounds of thrust. The underpowered engine, along with its flimsy straight wings, made the MiG-9 reliably unstable at speed. So, McCoy and Gurevich went back to the drawing board. They scrapped the straight wing design in favour of ones that swept back at a 35 degree angle, the perfect sweet spot, which added swept tail wings, a pressurised cockpit and, for the first time ever, an ejection seat. And it also rerouted the tailpipe to the very end of the plane. These modifications all helped to better to stabilise the aircraft and dubbed the I-310, but needed nothing really to remedy the sickly engine. Luckily, however, the beautiful British Labour government at the time was more than happy to sell the Soviets a bit of better technology. They'd been so impressed with the British-made Rolls-Royce Neen turbojet engine for some time. However, being on opposite sides of the Iron Curtain made getting hold of the technology quite unlikely. Stalin himself is quoted as saying, quote, What fool will sell us his secrets? Unquote. Apparently, that fool was the Minister of Trade Sir Stafford Cripps. With the blessing of the Labour Party, the Ministry of Trade licensed the Soviet schematics of the Neen. These plans were immediately reverse engineered to create the nearly identical motor with 4,800 pounds of thrust, dubbed the RD45, which was then installed in the I-310 to create the MiG-15. 
With the engine upgrade, the MiG-15 became an agile single-seat interceptor measuring around 33 feet long with a 33-foot wingspan. Yes, it's almost like it's a cubed aircraft. It was after all designed to hunt the B-29 Super Fortress and the B-52 Bomber. However, despite the turbojet engine, the MiG-15 was unable to reach supersonic flight. It could dive at supersonic speeds though, sure, but the plane's all-flying tail caused massive instability as the aircraft approached Mach 1. In fact, the plane was designed to automatically deploy air brakes in the event that the craft reached Mach 0.92. In addition, the first run production models had a great variance in their assembly, and they tended to roll lazily left or right while in flight, and pilots actually had quite a hard time controlling them at higher speeds. Ground crews had to actually install and calibrate aerodynamic trimmers to correct these faults. These issues were corrected about a year after the MiG-15's debut in 1949 with the creation of the MiG-15 BIS. The MiG-15's rise to prevalence in Korea meant that Russian technology was spreading and China's involvement in the Korean War was also increasing. Over 12,000 MiG-15s were produced and flown in over 30 different countries, which is really what I mentioned earlier in the video about its prestige and history. There is so much oozing out of this aircraft in terms of its credibility and usage. It's almost like the Swiss Army knife of fighter jets back in the time. They were used by China for more than two decades after the Korean War ended and are still flown today in air shows. The MiG-15 jet fighter really did enter the stage as a complete surprise, boasting the incredible performance and heavy hitting firepower. Its opposition accepted the challenge underclassed aircraft with only the advantage of its superior tactics. The US were completely taken off guard. And it was a pilot's dream scenario though. They finally had a contender where they could actually have solid dogfights with. Since the MiG-15 was built as a bomber hunter, it did not carry air-to-air -air missiles. Instead, the aircraft was outfitted with a pair of rather impressive 23mm and one 37mm cannon. They packed a hell of a punch, but unfortunately had a limited range, which made them great for taking down huge aircraft like the B-29, but unfortunately not so much against its arch rival, the beautiful F-86 Sabre. These intimidating weapons, combined with the unexpected speed and maneuverability, effectively chased out all the piston engine aircraft during battles of the time. The F-80 and F-84 were still not much of a match for the MiG-15. However, because of structural issues, the MiG-15 was not a good gun platform. Basically means that the guns they put on it were not structurally sound to actually maintain the recoil, high Gs and tolerances when it's actually going into dogfights, which was kind of the entire purpose of it. Unfortunately, also because of the fact that the fighter had problems with the Dutch rolling because of the wing flexing during high speeds, again, had even more impact to the maneuverability and accuracy of dogfights with this aircraft. As mentioned before, the MiG-15 was the first Soviet aircraft to feature an ejection seat capability. However, with its high-powered jet engine, the speed of the MiG-15 reached rendering any manual attempts at ejection completely worthless. The pilot's parachute doubled as a cushion above the ejection pan. Once detonated, explosive cartridges under the seat pan provided enough lift for the pilot to be, quote, lifted up over the vertical tail surface. The MiG-15 did have the advantage of the higher operating ceiling than the F-86, which allowed Soviet pilots to outmaneuver their opponents. Officially, the VK-1 turbojet powered the MiG-15, however the VK-1 was a little more than a direct imitation of the Rolls-Royce Neen. In 1948, when the aircraft actually started getting these new engines, it was strictly to be used in non-combat situations. The Soviet manufacturer Klimov reverse-engineered the engine and added a few original Soviet touches, thus creating the VK-1, an all-new Russian engine for its first all-new fighter jet. The VK-1, a centrifugal flow engine, developed 5,952 pounds of thrust. The differences between the Neen and the VK-1 were less about design and more about size. The VK-1 created larger combustion chambers, larger turbines and increased airflow. Rolls-Royce demanded restitution from the Soviets for licensing fees, but 
as you can probably suggest and guess from, it was completely unsuccessful. Despite the MiG-15's supersonic shortcomings, it operated extensively during the Korean War against also UN forces and to extremely good success, and has really created a legacy for this aircraft to last through the ages. Its swept wing design proved to be a major improvement and allowed the Soviets to dominate the straight wing craft during daylight hours. While the MiG-15 design later evolved into the MiG-17, the first Soviet supersonic fighter, the Model 15 itself is still the most produced fighter jet of all time. Some 12,000 units produced in the USSR alone and another 18,000 are estimated to be completed and manufactured by Soviet satellite states like Czechoslovakia. It's safe to say the MiG-15 is one of those aircraft that is a little bit underestimated when it came to uh, the forefront in battle and to this day has really earned itself a place in the prestige levels of aviation in combat aviation out there today. I'd like to really thank you for stopping by on my video today. It really does mean a lot to me. A couple of things I would uh, like to share with you today. Uh, if you do want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, please click on that little bell beside the subscribe button. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I will be releasing a lot more military related reviews and content in the future. If you want to be um, involved with my social media, you can check the description box below. I have my Facebook, my Discord, Instagram, all that good stuff. And also, if you do want to support or contribute any uh, donations to my channel you can check out my patreon my paypal uh, and if you want to become a member also uh, to become subscribed as a member to my channel you can click on that button also uh, close by the subscribe button thank you so much for stopping by i really do appreciate it and hopefully you learned a little bit about this beautiful little fighter aircraft have a wonderful day all the best bye bye